everybody. Um, this is the final video. I'm going to finish up on my mermaid steampunk, steampunk mermaid uh, journal. Um, this is what I've got so far. Um, I've got pieces here that I've been collecting. <clears throat> I know um, if you've watched the first couple of videos, uh, this is what I've done. Um, I've got some gears. I used uh, hot glue gun to make dots, some stamps, some twine, you know, and some more stamps. So that's the cover. I believe this was a Pop-Tart box. It's been a couple. <laughs> it's been a minute since I've, you know, done that. And then here's some flip-ups. Some steampunk stuff in it. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do pockets down here. So I haven't done anything as far as stamp eyes. I'm going to go ahead and finish that. Um, I've got some more... I believe it's three signatures. I've been collecting little stuff here and there to finish it up. So I want to get it finished up. <sighs> but yeah. So I'm going to do three signatures. I'm going to attempt to sew them. This was a, a Pop-Tart box, but I think my needle is strong enough to get through that. Um... <clears throat> I put some pages and stuff in here. There's a couple spots where there is little pockets and that's a little tuck spot and different things. So I'm going to go ahead and attempt to finish this today. I guess first things first, I'll probably go ahead and um, sew the signatures in and we'll get that done and out of the way. So let me grab my stuff and I'll be right back. Okay, what I'm going to do first, grab my ruler, <clears throat> is I'm going to measure where I want my uh, signatures placed at. Now I'm not going to butt it all the way up to the, to the fold, okay, because that would just weaken that. And since I've got three, I'm going to go ahead and just eyeball it. So this is a little bit less. I'm going to put the center one here. And then I'm going to go over, put this one here. So that's half, that's one inch, half, one inch. I'm going to put the other one right here. Okay. And I don't know how... Yeah, I can do it all the way down. So we'll do the same right here. So a little bit over three, under three, so right here. here, here, and then I will eyeball the center, well let me kind of give it an idea, about five, a little less than five, so I'll go a little less than two and a half, right there, a little less than five, so let me see where I forgot, all right, All right, now all I'll use is just a little, uh, or a white gel pen, so you can see the dots on the dark blue paint. <clears throat> Oops, I still need that. Let's see what's going to go first, this one. Now there's probably a much easier way to do this. There we 
go. So that's one. And I used to sit here with an awl and a wooden cutting board just to try and poke my holes. But you know what? I finally broke down and got a crocodile, a big bite, one of the, the larger ones. And that thing has made my life so much easier. It is unreal. And because we're working, you know, steampunk, I'm going to use uh, rivets or the brads that, that come with. One, it secures your uh, wrong door. There we go. It protects the holes that your that your thread goes through. So this is what I'm going to do. Six, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, I believe I got these. I got these at Tuesday mornings. The crocodile eyelets. That's what they're called. Hey. <clears throat> I'm going to set those aside for now. And I'm going to use my crocodile on the smallest. to make a hole. Make sure I got the right one. Yep. And see this, the crocodile is so big, it fits a lot more, you know, projects in. You can get more use out of just the one. So now I'm going to change it to setting the rivets. I'm going to flip this over because I want the rivet setting on the outside. See, look at that. See how cool that looks? I'm going to go ahead and poke. Make sure it's on the hole. Hmm. Yeah. Might have to make the center hole just a little bit bigger because it's double. Oops, wrong one. Because it's double. Here we go. It's double the thickness. <laughs> wow. Hey, Kelly, use your words. Good grief. But yeah, I think this will, 
you know, make the steampunk look a little, you know, pull it over. I haven't done anything to the back, but I'm not real big on, you know, unless it's just coloring, which is what I kind of did here. <sighs> Oh, my fingernails in the way that never works well sorry if I'm on a screen So now, make sure it's all poked through. Alright. And we've got it. Now we're going to set them. I've got the wrong size, which means I need to lift this and turn it. Let's try that. Nope, wrong one. I don't have my directions out, so. that one should be last one huh let me figure this out real quick Okay, can I say I'm an absolute idiot? Oh my gosh. I was trying to figure out what I did, what I broke, what I whatever. What I didn't do was push this all the way over like I was supposed to. I had it like halfway, and that's why it wasn't working. <laughs> so, yes, ladies, crafters, use all your resources, including your brain. But I do have one excuse, okay? I haven't finished my first cup of coffee of the day, which is, you know, still right here. So maybe that gives me a little bit of leeway. Maybe not, but you know, hey. Make sure there's no papers coming through. Alrighty. Oh, come on. There we go. Yeah, much easier when it's on the right spot. Good grief. I cannot believe what a ding dong I am. There we go. Mm. I went through all my settings. I was gonna, I was about to look it up online, and then I just happened to look over and went, duh. It might help if I had it actually 
on the setting it was supposed to be originally. <clears throat> there we go. All righty. Now, see, check that out. See on the inside, you can't tell, but. And it's all in there. So now we're going to put this away. Oh no, I can't put it away yet because I need to poke the holes in my signature. Okay. Find the center. Make sure they're all lined up. Alrighty. Now let's do this again. The grief. Okay. There's one. Two. And three. Okay, and we're going to keep at least one of them on there. Hold it in place. So that was number one. Let's do number two. Oh, that one I just tucked in there, so. I don't want that one there because it's a little bit on the short side, so I'm going to put that one in there. Make sure it's centered there. Oh, same size. Good enough. That way, if there's any shorter pieces that won't catch with the hole punching, then uh, the big piece on the inside will hold it in there. Oh, good grief, I dropped it. Okay, so let me get this, these other two poked and I'll be right back. You don't need to sit here and watch me do the same thing. Okay, now I'm just going to do a pamphlet stitch. To have my big wide, my needle with the big eye. <clears throat> and some natural undyed twine. Uh... Okay, where's my scissors? I don't want one of those. Now, depending on how you want or where you want your knots to go, all right, you can get as fancy as you want. You can get as simple um, as you want, okay? And a lot of folks leave the ties on the outside so they can hang dangles. Um, me, honestly, if it's going to go on a shelf, I'd like some more interest here. So what I'm going to try to do, since this will be my first time doing it this way, is um, try and, and do the dangle thing. I've got my whole little uh, Ziploc type plastic thing you can get at the dollar store full of different bits and bobs and um, these are the springs from a bunch of clothespins that I used um, for a Christmas present I was commissioned to do for someone. Uh, 
bunch of clocks and, and gears and stuff, which I may go ahead and pull one or two of those out. Uh, yeah, let's just kind of stick with that. So we'll put these here. <coughs> out so there's and they're really light they're like plastic made to look like metal so I mean that's that's pretty cool and I'm only gonna grab the ones and see they've got the little loop on them like if it was a button so I'm gonna grab one or two of those. Well, I've already got one of those, so I'm not going to put that in there. I'll grab a couple little ones. See if there's anything else in here I can use. one instead of that one. Same thing. And I may use them all, I may not, but let's see what we see. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to line up my holes and I'm going to start in the middle. that almost all the way through. Not quite. Let's see. And then you can either go up or down. It doesn't matter. But since I want you to add something to this, what I'll do is I'll put it through here. Well, let's first make sure it's right side up. Look, it's upside down. Put it the other way. Make sure where it's going. It's going to go to the right spot. And I don't want it all the way up at the hole. So... <clears throat> I'm just going to put a little slip knot right here. Leave it there. And go right through this hole. Oops. You see how that looks? Pretty cool, huh? All right, then I'm going to take it and go all the way down to the bottom. Look it through. Look it through. Making sure to hold my, my tail. And also kind of making sure it's tight. I'm going to pull this this way a little bit because I don't want it so high. There we go. Now I'm holding the tail here. And you see how the this is on, you know, go straight up the middle. So now I'm going to go back in the center. But this time... Make sure I can get it lined up first. There we go. This time when I come out in the middle, after I get it lined up, I'm going to make sure I come out on the opposite side. And you'll see why in just a minute. Make sure that's in the right place. Yes. 
I need to tie that tight. So that way I've got one tail on each side and I'm going to knot it. Just a little bitty square knot right over left and then left over right. And then I will trim it. And there's our first signature. Uh, I turned it upside down again. Good grief. Okay, I got it. If you didn't see in one of my other videos, I got a new camera mount so I didn't have to turn things upside down. Uh, and so now I'm just getting used to that. So there's our first signature. I'm going to go ahead and do the other two just like that off camera so that um, you don't have to deal with, you know, me putzing around. And I'll be right back. Okay, I've got all three signatures done. There's the back, or the binder, uh, what do you call it? This part, bad words, bad words. Okay, I've got the first one. And there's quite a bit of space in between here. And I didn't, I didn't know how thick this was going to end up being. And I didn't want to uh, just squish it, you know. Um, with this amount, you can either add more signatures if you like. That's not a problem. Uh, but usually when you start fixing the pages and stuff like that, you end up with a little bit of bulk in each. So that gives you room to uh, grow, to expand. I probably could have done another one, but uh, I just wanted it a little less ornate, a little bit more, you know. And I've done some envelopes in, so we've got some slide pockets. Some of this dendritic patterning. Oh my gosh, I love it. This came from one of my jelly plates. Look at that. You see the dendritic patterning in there? I love that. It's so beautiful. Must not have been dried. Okay. But yeah, so this is what we've got so far. Oh, I know why that happened. Because the other side of this had a pattern on it that I didn't like. So I just glued it. And then that means, since that side worked, this side, I'll have to add a little bit of glue right there too. Unless I do something else, I'm not quite sure. So we'll figure it out. All right. So these are some of the things I've been digging up. Got some die cuts, some things I made in the other. Got a mermaid. I've got a lot of under the sea graphics. Some windows, bird cages, more papers, and then I got this in a happy mail with a bunch of lovely goodies. And I thought maybe, maybe, maybe I can use some of these. Some beautiful stitching. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's gorgeous. Embossed and it's got shimmer on it. Yeah. I love this. Oh, definitely. So we can definitely use some of this yumminess. Let's see. Oh, yeah. I love it. This is steampunk stuff. 
And that's a great idea with the netting and it's been dyed. You can see that. Oh, it's upside down. Dang it, I did it again. So that's pretty cool. So let's see what we see. Oh yeah, I got lots of yummy goodies in this. Okay, so we'll set that aside for the moment. Figure out what we're going to do first. All right, let's do the inside. I can stamp on that, which I'll probably do, but I'd like to put a little bit of uh, something or another on there. Hmm. Okay, I lost focus. We go. I wish there was a way to, um, I used to be able to scroll in, but every time they update something on my, uh, my camera software, it doesn't want to, um, they don't give me a how-to on it. So it's usually something I'm trying to figure out. I used to be able to just use the scroll bar on my mouse and it's not happening. I'm not going to fiddle with it right now because for right now it works. Wonder if... Yeah, I kind of like that there better. So let's. I'm going to use some glue. I don't want a lot of shiny like you would for if you'd use Mod Podge or anything like that because you know this is grunge it, um supposed to be you know grungy and gritty and rusty and that type of stuff it's not supposed to be all shiny and pretty Need to get baby wipe. My spinners are sticky. I only need one. There's a lot of websites out there. People, um, for a long time, I thought, you know, there's no way I can use baby wipes because, you know, they get expensive after a while. But there are websites out there how you can use a roll of paper towels. You pull out the middle um, cardboard and just pop that right out. And uh, first cut the roll of paper towels in half, you know, lengthwise. You know, say this is your roll of paper towels. Cut it in half lengthwise. Um, and you can use a coffee can. Uh, Folgers coffee can works really well. Let me grab it and I'll show you. <clears throat> Obviously, I'm not going to cut my paper towels in half, but, you know, you put it in there. And then when you pull this uh, cardboard pull thing out of the center, you could pull the center one up, cut a slit in your coffee. What? Oh, I'm over here. Cut a slit in your coffee thing, set it down, and then you can pull your baby wipes out of here. I don't know the formula. I know if you're using just four regular baby wipes, then you'd put a little bit of oil or mineral oil and water and maybe some glycerin. I don't know um, the formula for other baby wipes because I made them when I was, when all my kids were little because all my kids were two years apart. So right about the time I'd get one out of diapers, bam, the other one would go into diapers. So I had like eight, nine years straight up diapers and baby wipes. That sucked. It got expensive. So I was making my own, but it's been, oh gosh, 25 years. Oh, that aged me. Yeah, it's been like 25 years since I've had to worry about that. <laughs> 
Now this is one of my dies. And uh, what I did was I had some watercolor paper and I just used some metallic paints, painted all different colors all over it, just willy nilly. Um, and then used it and cut, you know, my dies, used it on my die machine, on my big shot. Oh, let's see. And then some when I made them. Um, I used them in my uh, on my jelly plate, so they get some of it would get painted, some of it wouldn't. I feel like I like that right there. Let's see that one or that one? I like that. And some of them I didn't paint at all, and I just left them as is. But I really like that style right there, like that. And then maybe, let's see before I glue it all down, because I might change my mind and want something else, but I'm not seeing anything else at the moment. No, I won't put that there. Maybe this one. I like that. We'll do that. Or off offside. We'll do it offside a little bit. Now the only thing I'm doing is just decorating. Oh, excuse me. Grief. That was kind of scary. One day, my wish list of wish lists, I'd like to get some uh, of those really fine point, like Art Glitter Glue has it. Um, they've got the, the glue with the really fine tips. And it really does uh, save a lot of money on glue and, and stuff like that because you don't have to use as much as some of the bigger things say you do. Oh, can't even see that, so we're not going to bother with that one. All right, let's see. Can we do, let's do a pocket. How do we want to do that? We want to use some of this. Yeah, let's use some of this. Uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and get my paper cutter out. I've got two cutters on here. One's just to hold it so I don't lose it. One's got one's for cardboard and one's for paper. Uh, let's see. And I just use the one let's put it on this side. I don't have to use that one. Now I'm gonna keep that. And then obviously I'm gonna keep that. But I don't want it so deep. So, let me fold in one side so I can cut the excess off as I cut it. Now I'm folding in the side so that when I um, glue the pocket in, Got some room to. I better fold this one in too. Just to make sure. So it's got room to put things in, you know, as opposed to just gluing a piece of paper on uh, three sides. It doesn't give you room to put anything with any substance in it. There we go. 
see this way it gives you room to expand. And we're going to fold this up. Yeah, I could probably use my, my scoreboard, but nah. I am going to use my bone folder, though, to help give me a crisper edge. <clears throat> and then I'm going to use my scissors and cut out the corners. Got a little bit of an angle. So they'll fit together nicely. See that? It's not a perfect 90 degree cut. Doesn't have to be super dramatic. <clears throat> that way when you put them together, there's not so much bulk there. Like right there, that one, I probably could have given it a little bit more. I will, only because it's a pocket. There we go. That's a little bit better. Alrighty. So we'll set this aside. <clears throat> and some tape, some glue. This is thick enough where I don't think the tape will hold as well. So I'm going to glue, but I'm not gonna put a whole lot on there because I don't want it to ooze out and then make my pocket stick together. So when I do put the glue on there, I'm going to thread it. That way there's less chance of oozing. <laughs> I mean, there might be slight oozage, but you know, hey. Now glue does tend, to obviously, to take a little bit longer. And actually, I'm going to make these clips a little bit better to hold. have a clip long enough to hold that inside so give it just a minute I'll be right back okay so while that is drying for the most part let's set that right there oops I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of dyeing okay this is some gauze I got like oh my gosh probably a four foot by three foot size uh, cardboard box full of packets and packets of this gauze. And um, I mean, look how thin and yummy that is. My son gave it to me, said uh, one of the distributors he worked with at the time, uh, it was like an extra 
something or other or fell off the truck or I don't, I don't know, not anyways, but he was trying to get rid of it and didn't know what to do with it. So Steve asked me if I wanted it, my son. And uh, I said, sure. You know, thinking I was going to get like a shoebox size or, you know, even just like a regular Band-Aid size box. Not knowing that I was, it, I swear to you, it was like four foot wide, maybe three foot um, deep and three foot, no, four foot long, three foot wide, three foot deep. No lie. I, that's, I, I mean, I've been giving it away because I've got so much. I've got a box of it still in my storage that I haven't been able to get rid of yet. So if you want some gauze, <laughs> send me a, a, a message on Facebook or, uh, you know, give me, leave me a comment down below and uh, then we'll get with each other on Facebook and I will be happy to send you some. <clears throat> but it's, it's perfect. Look at that. It's so thin. So it'll fray, it'll tear, it'll it'll do whatever you want it to do. So let me get my other, where's the, oh, I already put them away. Good grief. Ah, uh, well, I'm going to cut a chunk and then I'll fray it. Because even cutting it, it's still, yeah, look at that. Look at that, yummy. And you can pull it and match it and move it. And but isn't that beautiful? That's gorgeous. Now we can dye it. I've got ink dyes and I've got, but I'm going to try and stay with the theme. I've got some Tattered Angel Glimmer Mists. And I'm going to put some in. I'm going to add a little bit of this red to it. The first color I used was, ooh, doo -doo 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 -doo, it's called Penny. This one's called Jolly Red. I'm going to add a little bit of Jolly Red to it. Now, you, you've seen I didn't shake it like this, right? I was just swirling it. Because when you've got a mica-based or mica-powder base spray even if you make your own if you shake it like that it will uh clog so let's mix that up a little bit and you see there's not really that much in there you know i only did a couple of sprays but i don't need a whole lot it doesn't look like much right and doesn't look like it's covered at all but this is the beauty of crafts. A couple sprays of water. Let it all soak in. Now, to me, that looks a little bit too red. I didn't want it that red. Although in the camera, it looks more brown. But looking at it, there's a little bit too much red to me. But it might work out, so I'm not worried about it. Alrighty. Set that aside. And I'm going to squeeze it. Just see now it looks pink. Doesn't on the camera, but to me it does. See how pretty that is, though? So I'm going to take some more and I'm just going to. Darken it up a little. And that looks better to me. Okay, we'll set that aside. And now you can, yeah, we could probably use the glue gun, but this is so thin and so delicate. Not the glue gun, the heat gun. 
it would probably melt it in a heartbeat. Just whoosh. So we're going to let this air dry. But because it is so thin, it's not going to take long at all. All right. Now the whole idea behind this is, you know, it'll look like net. You know, like a seaman's net or a fisherman's net. And that's the whole that's the whole premise of all of that. Now I've got my baby wipe. There's still a little bit in here, and I'm just going to wipe that out. Now when I'm done with this baby wipe, because it'll have colors on it and you know some glimmer, I don't throw this out. I let it dry and then I put it in an envelope. I have a nylon envelope. And when I get a bunch of these, I call them, I'm, I make my own baby, baby wipe flowers and paper towel flowers. There we go. And they're perfect. So why throw away all that yumminess? Okay, so we'll let that dry. This should be set. Yep, perfect pocket. You can throw your little tag in there. We'll put these up. Oh, come on. Don't be difficult. Put that away. We'll put that over there. All right, so I've got little pieces left from... Uh, the you know doing the binding on the what do you call it the signatures so I'm going to use those in the tags those waste not want not right and it also helps to match the items throughout yeah it's time to cut my nails again it also helps, helps match the items throughout and gives it a more cohesive look. I'm going to ink the edges of this one. I could probably get my big one out, but or my smaller one out. And I should have done this before I put the... But that's okay, because, you know, worse comes to worse. Let's see. I'll just make it a little dirtier. There we go. A lot of people ink their edges on a lot of different things and actually I think it's a great idea because you know you can put something up against something and it looks almost the same but the minute you ink those edges it almost gives the item that you're inking a frame and allows the uh, the item itself to stand out more And I, I love that. So, all right, so we've got that. <sighs> yep, then I'm going to do stuff like that throughout the whole journal. And when I'm done, I will come back and show you the finished product and post this up and all of that jazz. So I'll see you in a few.